Welcome viewers to another Glean Up podcast. This time we have as our special guest, uh, Marty Getz, who is widely known internationally as a Messianic music minister. And he's going to be spending a few minutes with us sharing his perspectives on what God is saying to him these days and how the music is influencing people all over the world, including people here in Jamaica. How many albums have you produced thus far? Oh boy. Well, we, we are we're not that prolific in terms of our production of albums. I work a lot, but uh, we probably have seven. We have a we have a live CD, which is also, which is also a DVD, mm -hmm. which was a concert in in Toronto. Uh, Canada. Psalm Enchanted. Evening. Psalm Boy, yes, that's right. <laughs> Psalm Psalm Enchanted Evening. My first one was called I Call You Friend. My second one was called The Love of God. My third one was called Sanctuary. We have the live album. I made an album called, that we call our Jewish Greatest Hits album, which is just songs that I love. You know, from Fiddler on the Roof. And, National Anthem of Israel called Songs of Israel. We have one that we call our Hanukkah Christmas album mm -hmm. because it features songs from our, our Hanukkah celebrations and Christmas celebration, which is called Festivals of Light. And our newest one is called Hope of Glory, which we yeah. just concluded. Yeah. Give us a few bars from one of the songs on, on Hope of Glory. Of Hope of Glory? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, I would say, let's see if we can give up. Oh, we, well, this is one we really love, especially because I'm an aging baby boomer. But there's one we wrote on Psalm 90, and it has children singing on, including my daughter and my wife. And the chorus goes, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days, to be glad, to rejoice in them. It's a lovely little song, great, great. based on Psalm 90. What have you not yet done musically that you want to do? What's left for <laughs> Marty Getz oh, to do musically? Other worlds, <laughs> I'm weeping for there are no more worlds to conquer. No, no, you know, uh, I would say that there's nothing, actually there's nothing I, 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 there's nothing that I, that I have as a dream to do. My dream is to be more uh, productive in my later years than I even was in my earlier years. I, that's really my dream, is to just continue to produce songs and, may add, you know, there's 150 psalms in the, in the scriptures plus the scriptures themselves. Indeed. And I, I feel that I, I, there's a lot there to mine. That I, so in terms of what, what happens with that music, I'd like to see it you know, disseminated in the body even more than that. Well, being in Jamaica, let me give you one um, to-do thing on, on your musical journey. You have to put some messianic music to reggae. I know, I know, I know. I was thinking about it. And then we can really call it Jew making. <laughs> Indeed, uh, that's a, that's a nice name for the album. Yeah, that is. I know. I know. You know what? We've heard some great reggae style. I, I, I have got to work on my reggae. It's not quite there. Okay, great. Uh, which song? Uh, this is a tough question, I know for you. But which song um, is Marty's favorite of all mm. the songs that Marty has done? Mm. Well, it's a, it's an older song, but the song that really I sing that every time I sing it, I I really resonate deeply with this song called "Song Called War, More Than the Watchman." It means a lot to me because it was it was written actually early, early in my walk, but it's based on Psalm one, Psalm 130, and it's a cry for um, to to wait upon the Lord and to have God revealed to you and to, for God to change your name. And uh, it was written at a rough time in my walk where I was really questioning things. And, and it has become, for us, we once we did it on a TV show years ago called Nightlight that was produced by a friend of ours. And I, it, it was a wonderful little scene where I played a, a janitor singing the song in a, in, a, in a recording studio and it was being listened to by a, a punk rocker who, who, who it turns his heart towards the Lord, and so it has a lot of memories for me. But also, we just love the melody, and it was just one of those songs that uh, just lives with me really deeply. 
having left the secular music world to um, sing songs about Jesus. Um, don't you uh, look back sometimes and say, did I do the right thing? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I could have been earning so much more money <laughs> if I was in um, secular music, and here am I in Messianic music. And well, you know, I have a <laughs> Jewish mother, and uh, Jewish mothers, they... Well, I often joke that they, they like to be able to say to all their friends, my son the doctor or my son the lawyer. You know? mm -hmm. She has to say, my son the gospel singer. Mm -hmm. So to this day, she is asking me, why don't you do secular music? You know, every, all, all the time, every time I call her on the phone, mm -hmm. she says, you should be doing secular. Neil Diamond. And, but uh, for me, actually, I've been more productive and successful in the in messianic music and, and believer believing music than I ever was in the secular world, mm -hmm. because you know the, in the secular world it's very fleeting, you know, especially now. Mm -hmm. You know it's like everybody's uh, your shelf life is about a year and a half. <laughs> you know? So if you're lucky, <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. so I feel very blessed that the people in uh, the body still want to hear from us. What's right about messianic music right now, and what's wrong about messianic music right now? <laughs> Well, you know, we, a lot of us uh, that, that are kind of my age and, and from America, we, we came through, our, our grandparents were Polish and Russian, and uh, we, so we have this European, this kind of like Eastern European mindset. You know, song, we learned how to sing in synagogue. That's where I learned how to sing. I was in something called the Cantor's Club, which was the... Uh, which was the, the the cantor is the is the leader of the songs in the synagogue, and I was uh, in this kind of like this little choir called the Cantor's Club. So, a lot of us learned to sing what we would call Jewish music from that tradition. Um, so a lot of the music has a tendency to, if it's Hebrew in style, it has a tendency to have that kind of stuff. Now Israel is really the next frontier for messianic belief. It is. Yes, I mean there's a there's a, there's actually a revival going on in Israel right now amongst young people. There's a lot of music coming out of there that reflects a much more world music kind of a vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. There probably is some reggae stuff. Oh, I'm sure there is. So they so there's a lot so that style is changing. So what I would say is right about it right now is that there's there's a lot of new music coming out from those new sources those new young people mm -hmm. um and uh you know you got matis yahoo the, yes. the jewish right now he's not messianic but there are messianic uh believers who are kind of following that kind of style i have a friend who calls me martin yahoo <laughs> but uh, i don't have that kind of style but so i would say messianic music has really done a lot to, to uh, inform the church and, and change even the way that the church looks at it. Worship, the dance, and the, the singing. But I think we need to, I think there has to be a way that it, it transcends the, the church and, and transcends kind of like the walls of the church and goes out into the world more. We have a friend who, who has a, a company called Galilee of the Nations, and uh, they do a lot of music that he produces Ted Pierce and he produces some other artists from Israel and um, he's 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 trying very hard to get the music outside of just congregations and out into the world so I think that's a challenge that's something people could pray for <laughs> that's what you are